Welcome back. This week we're going to go with the 20 inch or stonefly. Uh, my buddy Jeff down in Colorado, I asked a couple folks for some, uh, for some input on some videos to, to tie and Jeff mentioned the 20 incher and I, it was on my list and I got a list of patterns to do here front and back, just stuff that I want to go over, things that I want to cover. It was on my list to do and completely slipped my mind. Um, I haven't looked at that thing for a little while. I've been doing some other flies as they come to mind, but uh, Jeff mentioned that one and I was like, oh, I definitely need to do that one. So thanks, Jeff, for chiming in there and we're going to get right into this 20 inch stone fly. Uh, to start on this one, let me get zoomed in to where I am pretty happy with it. Um, where did I put the package at? No, I hung it up already. I hung it up already. There we go. This is a curved nymph, 2x long, uh, MFC 7231. Phenomenal hook. Um, these are great for stone flies. Uh, if you get them on the smaller size, they're good for caddises. I like these for hoppers and any really foam bodied uh, dry fly that I'm tying. Stimmies even, these work great for stimulators. So this one's going to be in a size 6. You can do this, I would say, probably anywhere from 2 to 10. It's going to be a good stone fly imitation. I've got an MFC. Uh, matted black tungsten bead. This is a 530 seconds right there. That's already on the hook. And I'm going to go with some 15 thousandths lead wire just to really lock this bead in place. I'm going to give probably, I'm going to say 10 to 15 wraps. This is more so, this is one of the smaller sizes of lead wires that you can use the 15 thousandths. I think I've seen them down to 5 thousandths or 10 thousandths, but 15 is about the smallest that I'll, that I'll carry. Like I said, about 10 to 15 wraps. I usually try and get it right around 12 just for consistency purposes. I'm not going to take the time to sit and count these ones out for your guys' sake. Not to, it may not be the most entertaining thing to watch me struggle to count really be tough if I have to take my shoes off to get to 12. So there we go. We're going to just put that in. The 15,000 seems to be about the perfect size wire to just mate up to this uh, 530 seconds bead. Now I'm going to take some 140 denier. This is just gray. And it wanted to get a little bit of couple of strands out there on me. That's all right. They'll clean up just fine. So I'm going to wrap this all the way back. I'm going to go to past the barb of the hook and I'm going to go right where the ascent ends. So I'm going to go a little bit further back on this one just because I want the tail to be a little bit more apparent and I want it to stick out a little bit further. So we go. We've got that bead locked in place. It's sitting really good. Clean that up a little. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to go with some dark brown goose biots. We're going to use these for our tail. I'm just going to take two of them and snip these off of the stem. These are probably the best stonefly tail imitations that are out there. Now I'm going to turn these opposite of one another so I get this nice split tail that you can see right there. So on this stonefly don't really have an extremely long tail in the nymph stage. So I'm going to take this about halfway back and that's going to be the length that I'm going to use for this. Anything longer than that, if I 
half half of the length of the hook is probably the longest that I will use to be honest typically I go a little bit shorter than halfway but this is a pretty good look right here this is whatever whatever it is well, I mean whatever you decide you want to use let me see there's a good look where you got that split tail and everything whatever length it is you decide you want to use find a mark if you're tying a bunch of these in bulk or whatever it may be just make sure that your flies are consistent and whatever mark you figure that you like and you set the you set those biots down and you look at it and you're like yep that's it find a mark whether it's something on the vise whether it's something that you measure up against the hook and use that consistency consistently one time after the next before I go into building any bulk on or any taper on this I'm gonna go with this is uh, tan big fly thread um, there we go that's up and down properly this is tan big fly well now it's on the floor oh well anyhow at least I already showed it to you I don't have to bend over and pick it dogs will probably get to it now but this is going to be our rib material you can use um, floss if you want I'm just going to take two strands of this and I'm going to throw this in this is going to be my counter wrap this may be a little heavy but one disappears in the body so I want to make sure that I have enough for this rib to show up so now what we have here is a pretty slender body for the length of the fly that we have it's really slender um, we want to build some bulk into that for our body before we go building bulk because that's going to be working forward I want about six strands of peacock curl the peacock is going to be the body of our fly I'm going to take three strands facing up, three strands going the opposite direction. So all I did was I just flipped them around. <clears throat> I have three strands where my ends are right here. I have three strands where the tips are right there. I'm going to find a spot to where I don't have any dead spots in, the, in that. To where I say dead spots, I mean this right here you can see where there's just that discoloration everything's consistent right here everything's proportionate if you will and I'm going to tie these in and you can see when I tie those in they disappear to almost nothing I'm going to pick up and make sure that I'm not interfering with anything right there and you can see right now as things stand I have just a mess of different widths and thicknesses throughout this. There's a big bump right here. There's a really skinny section right in the center. And the biggest thing about tying nymphs and dry flies is your proportions or your taper. So to combat this before we wrap our body is I'm just going to take some regular olive superfine that almost tried to go down on the floor with the floss this is just regular olive superfine super and I'm gonna build a taper with this underbody I want it really thin at the back and thicker at the top as I progress to the lead wire that I have tied in I want this body getting thicker and I'm going to take this up to probably the three-quarter point on this fly. Because I'm going to have an abdomen, thorax, wing case, so on and so forth. My first wrap with this, I just want to even this out. I want that body evened out. So you can see it's pretty proportional right there. It's, it's nice and even. 
I don't want to go any further forward than where I am right here because I have other things that I want to tie in for the thorax, for the wing case, for the leg section, and I don't want to build a ton of bulk. So I'm just going to take very thin pieces now on that on that first section that I was building my bulk with. I built that pretty sloppy. I just I just wanted things to be even coming forward. So now I'm taking even thinner wraps or thinner um, sections of dubbing here, and I'm going to build my body or my underbody. You can do this in any color, by the way. It doesn't need to be all of. You can see I have a pretty thin noodle right there. It's just not much thicker than the actual thread. And I want to take this back and just work this to where I have a very slight taper. So now you can see this taper. It's pretty, it's pretty subtle, but I, by design, I don't want this to be a real heavy taper. So now I'm just going to work this section up. I'm going to take my peacock and it's going to be one wrap in front of the next. And as I get closer, you're going to see just a slight build in that body. Now I can take this past there. I mean, I can tie over top of that. That's not going to be an issue. I can tie over top of that. So you can take it all the way up to the head if you want. But see how there's just that really subtle taper throughout this body. Now I'm going to bring my thread back to where I tied everything off and I have these two strands of tan thread. I'm just going to counter wrap this and I'm going to make a nice rib through this peacock curl. There we go. We'll get that tied off. And there you can see we have a nice contrast between the peacock and the tan. Really clean, nice looking ripped section throughout that. And it really just, like I said, a nice, a really nice contrast throughout that. So now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to come back to probably, oh, I'm really guesstimating here. I'm going to come back maybe one third from the eye of the hook back. This is where I'm going to tie in my wing case and this is just going to be turkey tail. So, let me get some of this stuff off of here. I treated this as always with the fly dressing. It just makes this more a little more rigid and here is, let me just zoom out a little bit because I'm not going to be able to do this justice zoomed in this close. When you get your turkey feathers, you're going to have a shiny side and you're going to have a dull side, just about like any other feather that you're going to find out there. You want to tie your dull side up when you tie this in, and I'll zoom back in and explain this. So we're going to tie our dull side facing up. So when we flip this over, our shiny side's going to be on the top. If you do it the opposite way, it's really not going to make or break the fly, just for consistency purposes. And I like that little bit of sheen that you get from this. I like that shiny side facing up. So I'm just going to tie this stuff all in, cut off that excess. And I'm going to bring this back just a few more wraps. I want to make that thorax just a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to come back even a little bit more, actually. There we go. There we go. I like that a lot better. All right. Next up is we're going to tie in the legs on this one. The legs on this is just going to be some partridge hackle. This is dyed brown. And we'll 
we'll find one that we like here. Take this partridge hackle and we're going to just move these longer feathers out of the way and we're going to tie in from the tip. I'm just going to cut this so I have a nice feed section that I can tie in. And I'm it, once again, I'm going to tie this with the dull side facing up. I'm going to move these feathers out of the way. Try not to trap too much. Just be careful that you don't get too many short fibers so when you flip this over, you're going to have a bunch of short ones making a mess on the back side of this. By the back side, I mean where you turn this over. You're not going to have a pile of short fibers just laying there and they're really tough to control when they're short like that. So make sure you clean those up pretty good. Now I'm going to create a dubbing loop. Grab my tool here. We're going to have this dubbing loop and try not, try your best not to get. Try your best to make a good whip finish. It doesn't skip on you. But try your best not to get a ton of bulk right in front of your bead head. If you do, when it comes time to finishing this fly off, you're going to have a bunch of bulk there and you're going to have a little bit of a bump. Try and leave just a little bit. That way you can avoid having all that bulk and your fly is going to look that much cleaner. Now I'm just going to take some natural color, colored hairs here and I'm going to throw this in my loop. You can dub this by hand if you want. I, I don't like doing it. I like the picked out look that, that you get from these dubbing loops. So I almost always, even when I'm doing hairs ears, I use, I use these dubbing loops. I just like the picked out buggy look, buggy effect that you get from it. Obviously as you get to the bottom you want this a little buggier toward the front and you can peel that back and they kind of aid or enhance your leg effect. So there we go, really simple, really easy, but you can see how it's that nice picked out section. Now I still have some room here. You can see that gap that I have between my bead and then there's that drop off right there. So I'm not, I'm not in any danger zone or anything to where I'm going to have too much bulk on this fly. Or too much bulk to where I want to tie this off. I'm not rushing the head at all. So now I'm going to peel these fibers back and I'm going to tie this in before I before I turn this around and show you what we got here because it's going to want to run away from me slightly. Okay, so I flip this over and there on this side you can see to where we have these nice segmented leg sections from that um, partridge hackle. There we go. And it just meshes really nice with that picked out rabbit hair, or with the hairs here. And then I'm going to take this section of turkey and go right over top of that. Now we're going to have a nice modeled section. And I still have that little bit of a gap, that little bit of a fall off from my bead down to the wing case. Now that's all cleaned up. Everything's nice and neat right there. There's a few wild hairs not to get too upset about. I'm going to take this close to the bead and now I'm actually going to take just the slightest amount to where I can get just enough to fill up that section of gray thread that I have and I'm going to be able to feel off that little bit of a fall off or that little bit of a drop that I have from the bead to the to the wing case. So I'm just going to dub a little bit 
more natural rabbit on here. Very slightly though. And I'm going to go right around. And on this last one, as you're right next to the bead, you're going to be able to feel that sink in to the bead. Just a quick three turn whip finish. This gray thread. Oh, I did not like that one. I did not like that one. This gray thread and the matte black MFC bead are almost identical. So now you don't have any mess. You don't have a big difference between your thread color and your bead. If you want to, great. I mean, there's a lot of folks that'll do some hot spots on these, and I recommend doing that. I mean, take some orange thread, take some reds, pinks, whatever it may be, and throw them in there. Sometimes hot spots can really make a difference um, on these flies. Let me straighten these legs out a little bit so it looks all right on the top view. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit more, and I'll rotate this around. Show a few pieces off of here. There we go. We'll rotate that around, give it a quick look. There is a variation of the 20 incher. Um, pretty simple stonefly pattern. Um, takes a little bit of time to get used to tying this one to get your proportions and everything right to where your tapers and everything are how you like them but overall very good stonefly imitation and definitely one that you should keep with you um, you know through prime stonefly season when they're when they're active underneath um, but as always questions or comments on this one leave them with me and I'll get back to you a few really picky sections right there I'll get back to you as soon as I as soon as I can and uh, let me see here is there anything else I wanted to cover on this one no I think that's it all right we'll catch you next week thanks again for watching